What time's the gate open this morning? Is everybody getting headed out this morning? We left out at 7 o'clock this morning, I-10 West. There's cars all over the highway. Everybody looks like they're doing good, having a good time. We're headed out now from uh, Gonzales. Are y'all taking 90 and doing the route? Well, the forecast don't look too good for today, guys. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're on Highway 90, heading toward Baytown. Just wondering how many people sticking to the route this morning. Good morning, Lori and Troy. We uh, are currently enjoying a nice little breakfast down in Lafayette uh, and trying to make up our minds what route we are taking to. We just talked to some folks at the hotel here. It's a group of about six of them. And they're taking an alternate route down along the coastline. Good morning, everyone. This is Ross and Kay. We're on I-10, first long haul. And we managed to get into the middle of a whole long string of vehicles. This is pretty cool. Are y'all planning on taking I-10 all the way through, or uh, y'all going to be making some of those little side stops? We're planning to stay on the route uh, from what they gave us in the goodie bag. Excuse me, I have been corrected. In the swag bag. We're following about a group of 10 people. We're on the route. Uh, everything looks good. Not a lot of people out. I don't think they even know we're coming through. A few of them does. A few sitting out in their chairs and waving. Hey everybody, just a heads up, uh, somebody put on Facebook a little earlier when you go through Bridge City, Texas, stay right at the speed limit, speed limit through town 45, they'll be watching for us rolling through. Just wanted to take a moment to say good morning to everybody and wish you all safe travels. Wishing I was there. What do we all stop for? Traffic all stopped on 90 West. Everybody awake? Good morning. Morning, uh, we're on mile marker 132 on I-10, caravan, I was just saying hello. What time did registration start in Baytown? I believe 12 o'clock, it's going to be at the school on 3180. What school that might be? It's the Barbers Hill School District. All three schools are pretty much right there, the intermediate, middle, and uh, high school, so. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. If uh, anybody's in this caravan with us, there's a green Acura 3.2 damn near hit us, so uh, watch out for them. We spent the night in Lafayette so that we could uh, sleep in a little bit and get a good breakfast in before heading out. So we're about 30 miles ahead of you already. Good deal. here gassing up at uh, I-90 and I-10 and uh, we seeing quite a few cars coming through here right now. I-90, I-10, where is that at? Well I did misspoke about Highway 90 is what it is. It's where you make the turn in Lafayette and start taking uh, Highway 90. If you want have me confused for a second. Got a line on I-10, miles long. You guys already made it to Lafayette and beyond. Uh, what y'all uh, see it on traffic on 10? Is everything open good across the Chapel Line Bay? Uh, the traffic's moving about 60, 65 mile an hour across. Sir, uh, yeah, sometimes that uh, bridge across the basin there, it, it gets to be a mess pretty quick. So I appreciate it. Yeah, we're about 14 miles from uh, Lafayette. Like I say, we're traveling about 60, 65. So good luck. First time using this, am I doing it right? Sure are. Thanks, this is a cool application. I haven't been able to figure out how to listen to stuff that's already been said, and I haven't figured out a way to approve of requests, but I do know to press the button and talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a step ahead of me. I had to figure that out. Good morning from Baytown. We got in late last night, uh, a little cloudy in the skies, but otherwise not too bad. We'll see everyone when you get here. Safe travels. 
at the top right, you can see like a little uh, clock with the arrow circle. You hit that, you'll see all the conversations. So am I transmitting? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Merritt, we're good for 40 miles. We just got off the 10 and are uh, in more of a residential area, and we are surrounded by cars, uh, most of most of which are on the power tour, so it's sounding really nice. We just uh, got passed by a cop, and his car says Iberia Parish, so everybody uh, keep it down. <laughs> We've turned off on 90 and f saw our first spectator videoing us. Cool. Get used to it. You're going to be seeing a lot of it. Yeah, I think I, Rian just went out on my truck. Where are you? I'm trying to see what exit this is, but it's by the diesel little capital. I know it's past exit 121. Exit 115. Man, the intersection here at 90 is hopping. There is just lines of cars everywhere. Just checking in on this thing. Loud and clear. Yeah, we should be coming up on Highway 90 and I-10. There's right around 30 or 40 of us, a little pack running together. Police officer has somebody pulled over at mile marker 134.8, but he's not a hot rodder. All right, we're at the intersection of 90 and I-10. Here we come. We're out there. Okay, anybody that had not got to Atchafalaya Bridge yet, uh, there's a cop just over the hill. Right as you get on the bridge, so be careful. Uh, got his radar out. My buddy says that those guys hang out on that bridge all the time. Is there any towing options from about exit 115 to the next stop? Any what? Come back? I'm off the exit on 115 and my rear end went out. I'm trying to see if I get to the next stop. Where the 90 goes left and the 10 goes right, there's an advanced auto parts store in LaPlace. Hey, Carol J. This is Rick. We've got the Mustang shifter bolted back on, so we're moving again. Oh, sorry. Some kind of way my uh, app got disconnected. I don't know if anybody came up with anything for exit 115, getting to the next location rear end. My rear end went out. Camaro Kobe, what's your location? To the gentleman with the differential issue, um, if you have internet access at all, I would suggest posting something on the Hot Rod Power Tour page. You're going to reach a lot more people that way than this small group of 40 or 50 folks here. Okay, thanks. Is that the, uh, on the website? I was actually referring to the uh, Facebook page for the Hot Rod Power Tour. Uh, they may have some info it's on their website as well, but uh, probably not much anything there. I don't know of any forum outside of that one. Okay, thanks. I'll check the Facebook page. Bame Shift is a good uh, resource as well. What resource is that? I'm sorry. Bang Shift. Gotcha. I'm sorry. I'm up under the car trying to uh, change the fluid. Yeah, no problem. There, there's a huge forum out there for uh, Hot Rod Power Tour on that one uh, as well. Uh, they've got several forums, but they've got one specifically for the Hot Rod Power Tour. Thanks a lot. There was a guy that posted on there yesterday uh, with a shop around Lafayette. That's correct. There's a guy in Lafayette uh, saying he, if anybody got any trouble, he can help. So uh, if uh, get on that Facebook page and just keep it posted on there. I just posted a picture of his post on here with his phone number. Go back to the round round eye on the upper right-hand side of your screen. You can pull the picture down, and it'll have his phone number in it. I seem to recall one for a Scott's Garage or something, I believe, that was in Lafayette. The one I posted on here is Joe's Rod and Custom. Uh, he had posted on the Facebook page a while back. Yeah, I think uh, trying to get that thing fixed local today or uh, in the morning is going to be your best option. Yeah, I'm going to try to pull the pan and see if I can see what it's doing and then go from there. That gentleman with the broke down 56 uh, Chevy, uh, I'm going to post a picture on here. Uh, found you a couple numbers of some towing services down around your neck of the woods if you need it. 
All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, just go to the little eye upper right hand corner and you can recover the photo. Uh, there's two local towing services from down around that neck of the woods. Are we there yet? Okay, thanks. I'll check them out in one second. Yeah, they may be a good source. Also, find you somebody to fix that thing. Um, they're part of a national tow consortium. Cool. Good looking out. Good to hear you out there managing the helm, Bill. Well, thanks for the thanks for saying that. I had to mute the other channel. It was getting too ridiculous trying to listen to two channels. Yeah, wouldn't be the first time I pointed a person in the right direction on Power Tour. Well, it's kind of handy that you're uh, stationary and got computer access too. The rest of us are kind of trying to drive and do this at the same time. What do you mean? I'm doing it on my smartphone. I could do that and drive and drink coffee at the same time. Well, I do say that, but at the same time, I've got uh, my laptop sitting here next to me and the Wi-Fi is turned on. Can you do all that? I lived in a record for almost 20 years. Yes, I can do all that. I can write invoices, punch computers, eat, and drink coffee and drive all at the same time. I'm looking for the thumbs up button for you. Yeah, it's pretty much what I do all day as well. What's that, drive a wrecker or eat and chew gum at the same time? Well, remember I was the mobile mechanic, so yeah, I'm doing the same thing all day long with the laptop next to me. Damn technology. Where's my paper maps and a phone book? Instead of Bill, we'll call you Jack. Jack of all trades. Feel like it this week. I personally like the title Hot Rod Power Man. Add golf cart repairman to that list too. Hey, I got the lights working on it last night after blowing out both headlights. Well, that's a bright idea. Yeah, it was. This sounds like Bang Ship Live. No, it was 10 o'clock at night, 90 degree heat. Ran out of Gatorade and grounded to the body instead of running its own ground. Forgot all about 36 volt versus 12 volt. I had my Homer J. Simpson moment. Don't. Good morning. Just curious, anyone see uh, the weather in Baytown? How are we looking out there? Actually, I just looked at the radar just before I got on here, and uh, there's a little cell coming across around the Austin area right now, but other than that, it looks good. 10-4. See you there. Once it starts warming up, I would totally expect an occasional pop-up shower, but nothing on the radar that I can see. Noah's still reporting a 40% chance of showers in Baytown today. Well, that means there's about a 90% chance that it ain't going to rain. That's just the way the percentages work in Texas. Just verifying the gates open at noon, or uh, is that correct still? I think there's a 90% chance that there's a 100% chance of rain. Yeah, my ma used to winter in Fort Worth. I hated going down 60 degrees one day and snow in 30s the next, and then 60 the day after. Was looking forward to catching up with some old friends down in Grand Prairie, but that ain't happening. Uh, just looking at the event details again, yes, uh, I've confirmed the gates open at noon. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, one time in Austin about 15 years ago, we had a week where every trees. And then all of a sudden, one day in the middle of the week, it hit 100 degrees. That is a sign that uh, I needed to take the boat out on the lake, so that's what I did. I did New Year's Eve one time in San Antonio, and I could dig that weather all year round. Yeah, we usually do New Year's Eve barbecues in shorts and you know, Hawaiian shirts. The only thing left on my bucket list is I want to do that street party festival they do down in Austin. Which one? We do one every weekend. Nah, that big one they do. I can't remember the name of it. There's a big one down there. You might be thinking of South by Southwest, which is a big music festival and interactive deal. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah, that one's been going on for about 25 years now. It's always in the downtown area. They do uh, films and... You know, other multimedia type stuff for about a week, and then the uh, the rest of the week they uh, do music stuff with bands coming in from all over the world. Yeah, but us pale pale skinned white folk don't do Texas in June. 
Uh, South by is always in March, uh, right around the uh, spring break time for us. That was a joke, Scott. Sorry, we're eyeballing hot rods, and I'm trying to focus on driving, too, so my brain slipped a little. Well, I guess in that case, it's acceptable. I guess your photograph I noticed on Facebook of the Gibson girls was pretty popular with them. Yeah, I think I'm going to be visiting their booth today and seeing about getting some swag out of them for all that publicity. Nothing wrong with that. Looks like Summer has a good attitude about it all. I look forward to actually meeting her. I know I've been thinking about turning off my Facebook notifications because it's just buzzing me every two seconds with somebody either liking my photos or liking those girls. I'll give you a like for it. <laughs> now you got to figure out how to uh, print that photo and get them to autograph it. Got the printer in the back seat hooked up to the laptop. There you go. Photo paper and you're done. Not a bad idea. Thanks for it. Yeah, it's that Kodak moments that are the most memorable. Holy crap, I just saw that picture again. 241 likes. Where are we on the comments? I think it was around 23 when I last checked. Yeah, I think that's worth at least a t-shirt out of those girls for me. I count 30 replies, including a follow-up picture of the girls at the booth. Nah, I didn't look at that. I was looking at something else about the 50 people that were killed in the Florida nightclub. Yeah, I heard about that. I thought it was only 20 and 40 injured. Well, now it's 50 killed and 53 injured. Holy shit. Oh, holy cow. Enlighten me on that, please. Some guy went into a nightclub in, I believe it was, where was it? Somewhere in Florida and uh, started shooting up everyone. I just posted a screenshot of uh, Orlando Police Department's Twitter feed. Yeah, it's 50 dead, 53 injured. Yeah, definitely Orlando Gay Nightclub marks deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. They're, they're calling it an Islamic terrorist activity. That's why you gotta carry. Some people just need a fucking hobby. Amen on the carrying thing. We got a truck pack in here. It's a bad world we live in right now. You gotta protect yourself. Totally agree. Better to be judged by 12 than to be carried by 6. Roger that. Well, we're actually on I-10 at the moment, and uh, there is a big pack of cars here all cruising. What part of I-10? We're at mile marker 18. We're just ahead of you at mile 13. Okay, yeah, cause there's about 15 of us right here. Right going in that nightclub had a gun on him and fired back. I'd say there's probably a good 20 cars out here, including a couple of... Somebody needs to get up to them Chevy Performance guys and tell them, Hey, you need to get on Zillow. Hey, one on I-10, what are you driving in? I'm in a big candy apple red Nissan Titan with a white camper shell. I know it's a sexy beast, right? Uh, yeah, there was another support vehicle, but I guess it was a black Tundra, not Tundra, but a little SUV. Now, Scott, I'd give you some props if it was a Nissan with that new Cummins, but it's probably an older one with the V8. Yeah, I was uh, talking to the Nissan dealer about that bad bulk, baby. But, yeah, somewhere around like 65 grand just wasn't in my uh, wallet at the time. Yeah, I seen that thing at the Chicago Auto Show. It's pretty, actually, it's pretty stout. It's a nice truck. I would uh, happily have one of those. Speaking of stout, I could go for a stout right now. What? No spotted cow? Enough flavor for me. Well, they do have a, a sampler pack now. They do have a uh, Moon Man. That one's really good. Yeah, I was in Woodman's about, oh, shit, now about a month ago. And uh, I saw that sampler pack and I thought about it. And just stayed with the regular. Quit teasing me, guys. I can't get that stuff down in Texas. I'm sure you got your share of microbreweries down there. Austin has 23 of them just in within the city limits. So I'll have to stop at each one of them. Give me a holler. I'll take you to a few. That would be nice. And then I'm serious. I'm a stout and porter guy myself, and uh, of course that's my town, so I know where they all are. Actually, I'm an IT 
IPA snob. Uh, the, actually, a double IPA is my favorite. If it's cold, that's all I care. And it's not dark. I've often said there's two types of beer I drink. The type I buy and the type somebody else buys. Never heard that one before. I like it. I like the type that somebody else buys for me the best. It always goes, somebody else's always goes down better. Well, feel free to use that quote as, as much as you want. You just got to make sure to give me credit. No. The uh, Buta Gearheads are uh, holding a, an event after the uh, Hot Rod thing ends on uh, Monday down in Buta. I think it goes until about 9 o'clock. It's a little cruise in. Uh, if you want to connect with me that evening, I'm happy to take you to a place. They've got about 30 taps on there. I think we can find you an IPA or two. Maybe I'll do that, Scott. Thanks a lot. Group with me. Uh, but if I could get away, I would do that. I like showing off my town. Get that. By us, like the main brewers would be like Miller. What what uh, in Texas is your main brewer? Well, it used to be Lone Star Beer, but they're now owned by Miller. Uh, I guess the next thing would be Shiner Beer, Spetzel Brewery. Uh, the main thing they're famous for is their Bach beer. Yeah, Shiner Bach is delicious. It's from here. Come again? Oh, Shiner was from down here. Little town of Shiner, Texas. It's off of uh, I-10 outside of San Antonio. Learn something new every day. Oldest continuously operating brewery in the state of Texas. Well, all you Illinois and Wisconsin people might run into something on the way up on Saturday, if you're coming back on Saturday. Uh, they're adding the names of the Middle Eastern conflict wall and doing the big motorcycle run down to uh, the river on Saturday uh, in central Illinois. So you might run into that on your way back. I'm back in my own home turf now, just across the state line. There's a rest stop there packed full of cars. We have the oldest continuing operating brewery in the USA in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. No, sir, it's in Pottsville. Okay, it's in Pottsville, Pennsylvania. You guys are getting me thirsty. What's that brewery in uh, Pittsburgh? It's Yangling. I should have known that. That gum. My husband was all excited because he was able to get a yingling in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, that's some pretty good stuff. Tommy, are you driving that little green hornet? Hey, Scott, I got a photo for you. Somebody just posted on the uh, Facebook page for Hot Rod Power Tour about your hometown. That ain't right. <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty much a daily occurrence on 6th Street. Gotta love it. <laughs> Bill, you ever thought about getting into doing voiceover work? Well, they always said I had a face for radio. I suspected as much, but you certainly do have a voice for it. I would have friends. I have friends in radio that disagree with that one. Yeah, I don't know uh, what you're talking into there, but... Uh, I've got to turn you down every time you come on, and i got to flip everybody back up. Got a good microphone on that thing. Just a Gal Galaxy X6. Go to the bottom right-hand corner where the gears are at, and you can adjust my volume so you don't have to keep playing with the volume of your telephone. Well, ain't that slick. And you probably had my volume turned up, didn't you? Ah, who knows? I'm in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic here with some semis, so I ain't fiddling with it yet. Well, you'll notice if it's if you're hearing scratchiness, if you adjust the volume, you'll get rid of the scratchiness so you can hear the person better, too. It's a simple-looking app, but it sure has a lot of features. Now, you put it on a laptop, and it even does more. I can take a shop two-way radio, pipe it into the laptop, transmit on Zillow and it will automatically transmit via the two-way radio and open up your two-way radio access so if you're a ham radio operator or have commercial radios and stuff like that 
you can operate it via the Zillow. Hell, I even think they, I posted a link about it, but uh, I think they use Zillow to overthrow uh, Cesar Chavez's uh, band of the internet. I remember hearing something about that. It's a Texas-based company that, own, that owns Zillow. Actually, if I recall, it was an Austin, Texas company that owned Zillow. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. There's so many technology companies in that town and more coming in every day. Well, we started using it as a resource after they got rid of Nextel in the transportation industry. And Sprint, with their push-to-talk network, wasn't working out. And, you know, as you obviously can see, you know, this goes between Android and iPhones and cross-banding and all that good stuff. And it works nationwide. So guess what? More and more people are using Zillow versus using uh, the... Now, my wife at work, she uses Voxer. And with Voxer, you can't do like what we're doing where there's 32 people in our room right now or however many people are in our room. Everybody can hear the conversations. Voxer is only one-on-one. -on -one. And that's your techie moment of the day. What's everybody else doing out there? Ironically, sitting at a gas station. Well, gas is good as long as it's just gas. Nursing this beautiful 67 Mustang with a fuel injection issue. So we've been only able to do 65 for the last couple of days. It's killing us. Ah, 67 with fuel injection. Ah, gotcha. Hot Rod Magazine's uh, Facebook page has a live feed from the uh, Royal Pooper Raceway, Raceway right now. Did y'all see that uh, picture I posted of that 57 Chevy, the green that was jacked up about two feet off the ground? Yeah, we just passed it here on I-10 and uh, it was doing about 75 miles an hour and just looking cool as shit. Scott, did that Woody have a laid back sticker on the side window? It did. In fact, it even had a laid-back license plate on it. Yeah, there was uh, several vehicles in their convoy we just passed. Well, I guess the U-Haul and the tow dolly is cheaper than the uh, tow bill. Yeah, we just passed a whole other string of them. I'll uh, try to post a couple of shots there, too. Just passed a sign for La Cuisine, like casino, and uh, we just passed a speed trap. So careful, it's on the left. Are you talking about on Highway 90? Just passed up the Wisconsin group. Hey Cliff, did you get this to work, this application? Is registration going to be at Sterling High School in Baytown? Oh my God, it's Barry White. I just wimped out and put my convertible top up. It begs the question, is Lori running topless today? And what's the mile marker? Well, yeah, we're running on I-10 at about mile marker 805. Hey, should be coming up on the Old Lost River then. Crossing that bridge. Yeah, four. It's probably about two miles, three miles to the exit. The exit at uh, 3180, you'll go right. And the school's about a quarter mile up to half mile up. That's where you're going to check in. You guys made great time. What time did you leave this morning? Well, we had a little bit of a head start. We stayed in uh, Lafayette last night, about an hour outside of Gonzales, hour and a half. Cheater. Man, that was a steep bridge. Yeah, but the hotel was only $89. Overachiever. I think you should go to the Lion's Den and eat, Brian. They got good food there. Two drink minimum. Tommy, I don't think you're transmitting on Siwi. Yeah, this will be my second year for the tour. We're trying to find out the best way to run it, either running with the, the tour itself or running ahead of the tour. I think a big part of the fun is running with a whole bunch of hot rodders around you on the back roads. Yeah, I agree. We did that last year, but we didn't have any time to see anything else. We only did the venues, and uh, even showing up at the venues, we were we were – Cutting close to the closing time. Yeah, but the problem with that is you get people along the route that are expecting you guys to stay on the route. And like last year, it was a prime example. Everybody got jammed up in traffic from Madison to go to Champaign. And half of the people that make the commitments at the venues 
bailed on the route. And then the people on the route are like, oh, what is this? You know, they, they go out there and they expect to see you guys on the route and you're not on the route. I guess I don't understand. I thought the vendors were really looking for us at the next destination to spend more money. A power, power tour is to cruise the country. Agreed. Yeah, but you know the vendors are leaving the night before to get to the next city. They're not sticking around. Yeah, and they don't st stick around. I mean, the venues are closing up at 6 o'clock, and just like the um, GPS for one of the guys earlier said, you know, leaving at the, at the time they were leaving at, as the route destination said, you know, they're leaving at 8, and they ain't going to get in there till in the Baytown till 3 o'clock, and that's barring no traffic or any other incidences. Absolutely right. We've been nursing a, a ill uh, running car, so uh, you cut it close every day. I mean, I understand it's a pain in the ass to set these kind of events up and everything have everything there for you guys when you get there. But Jesus, look at these NASCAR guys. They can go cross country and do what they got to do and everything like that. You mean to tell me that these these drivers can't do that too? as far as the semi-drivers that are hauling all the equipment for all the vendors? That's what I was saying. They're, they're leaving the night before to get to the next city to set up for, for when we get to the next town. I mean, is it a highway cruise? Is it a, is it a road trip? Is it, I mean, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's where they got to make the decision on what they do. You know, I think it's up to the participants to decide what, what do they want to make of it, too. Do they want to make it a road trip? Do they want to make it a vacation? You know, it's all up to them. I know my first couple of stops, I've been all over this part of the country already, so, but uh, after, after we leave Austin, I'll be taking the routes with the, the tour to see different parts of the country. Here, I just got one for you guys, came across on Facebook. We're supposedly whining. I don't think we're whining, we're just having a discussion. I think what... The hot rod does is fantastic. The fact that you can get this many people out here having fun, I think it's great. For me, I come and go as I wish and get to the venue in time to, you know, of course, get stamped and see who's selling what and uh, hit the hotels for some uh, under the hood talking with other car guys. Uh, it's a great event, but uh, it can always get better. There went Scott right by us in his little red truck and didn't even wave at us. Yeah, for me, it was a uh, opportunity since it came so close to me for me to get a taste of what it's like and get my juices flowing to get that damn hot rod finished. So we're having to do a little bit of the uh, highway today just because my buddy needed to get back into town. Uh, but tomorrow I'm going to be running the route with everybody to Austin. Well, there you go. Come on, Leslie, quit being a keyboard commander and... Uh... Say something on here if you if you think we're whining. Well, I'm going to be bypassing tour tomorrow, but that's only going to stop in and see my mom in San Antonio, and then I'll catch up with everybody later on. That's whining, it's whining. Bill, did you say I was not transmitting on seaweed? Nah, a minute ago when they were talking about lunch, you were transmitting on the main channel and not transmitting on seaweed. I heard you key up on on seaweed later, so yeah, you were you you just got to watch your display if the image if a person's image doesn't flash up as you're keying up it means you're you're not transmitting on that channel believe me like i said right now you should be seeing my ss as i'm transmitting um believe me it took me a while to get used to it too problem i'm having is i just keep cutting in and out so if you guys say something i don't respond i just keep losing service somehow yeah roger four on that jerry are you okay yeah, we'll be fine. We just got a, a dead pro charger. We're going to bypass it. Well, the uh, venue is just slightly damp. We got some sprinkles going on over here. Well, that won't be good for the race, then. But the party should be awesome. Yeah, that post doesn't make any sense. I don't see how we're whining. Wait, I'm whining about whining. Sorry. Oh, I can whine. I created this SOB. Yeah, if it was an official hot rod power tour... You know, Zillow thing, eh, maybe they might have some basis, but pff, we ain't whining. We're having a good time. If anything, we're beering, right? I don't know about you. I'm still on coffee. 
And just to clarify, when I went last year, I did the whole tour. I had a great time. I'm, I'm looking to do a partial tour this year because of the new job, but I'm still looking to have a really good time. Well, we're having more fun than two pigs in a mud puddle on this end. You didn't see where I parked my Corvette yesterday. It ended up being a mud puddle after the rain. Well, I'm jealous of all of you. Yeah, I was supposed to do it in 14, uh, two legs in 14, and threw my back out waxing my car. 15, my parts didn't show up till the Saturday, and I'm getting too old to turn around and pull all-nighters to try to, uh, well, actually, that, that would have that been, uh, been interesting. It showed up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, there was no way I was going to even try it. And this year, I had some personal issues come about that caused me not to be able to go. So I'm jealous. And I'm feeling pretty blessed to be here. So I'm going to tell my story real quick one time. Oh, by the way, here comes that 57 Chevy that's up in the air that somebody was talking about. Saturday morning, I left my house. Friday morning, I left my house in my 1960 Bel Air. Beautiful full restoration and all the bright rear wheel studs sheared off at highway speeds. I lost the tire, wrinkled the fender, ripped the gas tank out, and went drifting down the highway and missed the ball and all kinds of other cars. So I feel very blessed. Turned around and went back, grabbed another car, and took the whole tour. Oh, I saw the picture of that. That was you with that uh, Bel Air that lost the wheel? Oh, yeah, man. I'm sorry to hear about that. I saw that, too. Glad you're okay. Yeah, thanks. It, yeah, it, it, it's just one of those things. I had seven cars behind me, and uh, everybody tucked and low and got out of the way, and uh, just feeling very blessed. I mean, oh, well, it's just, just life. Uh, had a thousand miles on it. No idea what happened, but chance to upgrade it a little bit more, I guess. Yeah, I saw that post on Facebook, too, man. Glad you made it okay. Yeah, thank you. The main reason I had to go home was to change the underwear. Yeah, old circle track trick I learned years ago, and I still do it on cars I'm able to to this day, is I put the uh, big old one-inch lug nuts for, like, the circle track uh, cars on my uh, on my street cars that I play around with. I've learned in the past, you know, you get a little bit of horsepower, you twist an axle, and always seems to be the studs fail. But, yeah, glad to hear you're out there, too, Rick. Yeah, having real fun. I uh, I brought three first timers with me. I think this is number eight or nine, but I brought a, a few uh, first timers and we're going the whole distance. One of our guys has a just fantastic, incredible '67 Mustang with a, the most phenomenal intake system that is giving us a hard time. Uh, Should velocity stack set up, so we've got all kinds of mechanical problems. But we got to run it. It's we have literally some jumper wires and stuff to make it work, and uh, it can do about 65, so we're freezing. Well, it's definitely a badge of honor. But it's embarrassing when you have to go home and you say, Honey, can I borrow your Corvette again this year? <laughs> I bet that rotor will be hanging up on the wall of your garage, though. Oh, you're absolutely right. It's ground flat uh, where it impact. Yeah, that'll be a part to retain. Yep, some guys put horseshoes up, car guys put rotors up. Well, the understated uh, comment from that event uh, was the gas tank was literally ripped out and uh, the weight of the car held most of the fuel in once the tow truck picked it up and started leaking. So it could have been a lot worse. I'm sure there were plenty of sparks back there. So. Anyway. And that's what they have insurance for. I called up from the interstate. It took two and a half hours to get the right truck there to pick it up. So uh, yeah, I already made that clear. One of the guys I'm traveling with has a GoPro and he says he has it on video. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Wow, two and a half hours to get the right person out there to turn around and be able to tow it. Damn. Frustrating day. About six hours or so after I left the house the first time, I left again. But anyway, we got there. Fortunately, I was only 50 miles from the house when it happened. Like I said, I had gone a thousand miles on the car already, so I had no idea why it came apart. Then. Anyway, ARP bolts from now on, that's for sure. Those, but those uh, extended length studs were not from ARP. 
Now be honest, how many burnouts were in that thousand miles? In all honesty, only two of them. About a 350 plus horsepower car weighs about two tons. It was just kind of, man, will it, will it even break them loose? So, pause the rear end, I, I put it down a couple of times, and that's it. So, nothing too bad. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I remember the first time I had a wheel pass me. It was not a, well, fortunately it was on a, on a circle track, so it didn't really matter. But I remember seeing a wheel pass me and didn't think nothing of it until the next lap around and the black flag came out. That's some driving. No, that was a welded rear end. I understand. It's a petrol stop. And it's raining. Well, this channel was very quiet. 33 silent killers. And that one's gone. Thank you for getting rid of that whiner. And... Uh, I guess he didn't get the hint when I bounced him. Now I blocked him. Yeah, I was uh, taking a break while we were getting ready to uh, go into the venue and uh, was reading through the uh, the whining post there on Facebook. I'm uh, still not sure what the hell we were whining about. That's exactly why I replied. I'm like, what the hell are we whining about? Yeah, let's don't start a pissing match on Facebook, though. You know, it's, it is what it is. You know, everybody in this world is entitled to their opinion. And you guys just found out why I wanted more moderators this year. Every once in a while, you'll get one of those that'll bounce into the room, and they'll turn around, and they will uh, raise hate and discontent. And just kick them out. Heck yeah, man. The first time I joined, as soon as I joined, we had that, that uh, little... Little banger guy, whatever his name was, cursing up a storm. Scott Kirk, you on here somewhere? Page out for Scott Kirk. Well, fellas, we're about to walk into the venue, so I'm going to go ahead and mute the conversation for a bit and enjoy some of the stuff. We'll talk to you guys a little later. Have fun, Scott. We'll do. We'll check in from time to time. Don't worry. I know. This is Brian. Look, I know Scott's been chiming in trying to get me back on the thing. I just forgot to turn the stupid thing on during the trip. Stop, stop at the Sonic when you get off at 877 and join a lunch break. I'm watching everybody else drive by for a few minutes. I just entered Texas, and this is where all my exes live. Problem is, I know you don't live in Tennessee. Yeah, as I was saying earlier about the unsavory types that show up on here. Has anybody ever searched any of the channels on Zillow to see what kind of... Uh, different groups there are on this thing i know i haven't i looked briefly and i saw a lot of what appeared to be garbage teeny bopper kids talking trash yeah there's a mix of both um some of the storm chasers are on here some of the ems people are on here there's uber people on here and then there's just garbage and unfortunately the garbage seems to outweigh all the important stuff and they will turn around and search out and find stuff like this group and just to try to influence it or to try to block it out and stuff like that. They'll come in and pull the crap like this guy just did a couple minutes ago. Sounds like I missed some fun. No, you missed the fun a couple of nights ago. And uh, they do it when everybody is asleep. Uh, that's when it really gets interesting. Yeah. Drunken teeny boppers with nothing better to do than cause trouble. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I'm only human. Uh, that's why I, uh, one of the things I said this year when I put the channel together for this year was I wanted it to try to make more moderators out there so that way it gives other people the ability to catch it so I don't have to try to monitor this thing 24-7. Extra eyes and ears are always a good thing trying to keep things in order, especially being a lot of families probably listening in on the tour. I know one of the Wisconsin guys that has his daughter on here, and his daughter, you know, is on the tour with him. So it's like, yeah, and, and that's it exactly. You know, then we're family orientated. Yeah, we might act like drunken sailors from time to time, but we're car people. Exactly. We know where to draw the lines as and what the limits are. Yeah, there was one came on here a couple nights ago, spewing the N word and all sorts of garbage. Oh, that's one that would have got my blood boiling in a hurry. That one's lucky I didn't get admin powers or he'd have got booted in about three sentences. Yeah, we didn't have any mods on at that time. It was like at midnight. Yeah, when I'm not able to be on here, I, I still keep it on, but I put it on busy status. 
um, just so that way if I hear something like that, I can kind of catch up to it later, but unfortunately can't get it all. Me being a night owl like I am, I would have probably been listening live and, and jumped him right away and put him out of his misery. I mean, he was just a troll. You, you know, fighting back with him isn't going to help anything. It's just going to make him more worse. But it only takes a few seconds to block him and boot him. Yeah, again, if we had somebody that was online, I would have blocked him too. I'm... Yeah, see, that's the problem with him. Because it's so new to all of us, you know, a lot of people don't know the moderator duties and stuff like that as far as the keyboards go. I mean, you can mute people without even realizing it, and, you know, it, it's, then it screws it up for the people that are good people that are on the tour. And so that's why I've been trying to make people the moderators that have used Zillow or got an idea of how Zillow works. That's the best way to do it. That way everything stays fair and... Those that need to be properly dealt with can be. And I'll be probably adding more people as moderators as time goes on during the tour, just simply because, you know, you can't be, everybody can't be everywhere every time. That's for sure. Even on Power Tour, you got to get a couple hours sleep. And I just checked, we're up to 270 subscribers on this channel. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to, you're going to get the eggs that float in from time to time that just, uh, you want to crack. You can sleep after the power tour. Nah, you sleep when you're dead. Exactly. Sleep is way overrated anyhow. Oh, I know that firsthand. They pulled my DOT card for sleep at me of all things because I won't wear a mask. Uh, I know the feeling. I had a med card for a while myself, and yeah. once a year I had to take in the report from the VA so they could validate I'm still compliant and reissue a new card. Yeah, with the way the trucking industry is going, it's, they're grab, grabbing kids out of uh, driving school. And, well, needless to say, you know what? Let them have it. Yeah, I don't miss the all the regs and that. I still drive for a living, but I don't need a CDL for it anymore. I just jump in the van, go make my deliveries and call it a day and go home. Yeah, I still keep my CDL only because I can still go interstate, intrastate, excuse me with uh without this without a med, med card so you know screw it yeah the government's trying to tell me how to breathe they just can't tell me what to breathe no doubt and that note i think i'm gonna light up a cancer stick <laughs> perfect timing on a more positive note hopefully everybody's having safe travels it just made it to royal purple it's uh, overcast and uh cooling off a little bit so we'll see everybody here Oh, great. Here we go. They're reporting that they took somebody into custody in L.A. at the Gay Pride Parade. They had an arsenal in his car. Like, not sure why you would want to haul more than one gun. Well, I do want to go to the range. Hell yeah. Yeah, it scared the crap out of somebody if they pulled us over when we are on our range trip. Agreed. I would probably have a small arsenal as well. I've been making my own ammo for over 10 years now. Everything we have is in 50 cal cans. I'd scare the crap out of somebody if they ever pulled us over and we're on their way to the range. I tried to take a few 50 cal cans home from Afghanistan, but they wouldn't let me. Well, probably not full. No, I could probably see that. Yep, they're saying the Florida thing is the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. They're chopping it up to a terrorist attack almost yeah they're saying a the gunman called 911 claiming his uh, alliance to ISIS I'm curious to see if they find that to be true they said the FBI was looking after him too so why did he have guns well, I guess if he hadn't broken any laws beforehand yeah 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 all it's gonna do is screw up AR-15s again they're gonna go through the roof again you know Hello, panic buying. Yeah, good thing I already have mine. Yeah, I tried buying 22 long rifle. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, that's always been an issue, though. <laughs> At least for the last couple of years. I got lucky. Well, my last trip to Wisconsin, they had some on the shelf. It was a little pricey, but they were only they, I got two boxes out of it. In Huntsville, Alabama, I could get 22 long rifle all day long. Yeah, I can get it up. In uh, 
Dick's Sporting Goods has it. You can get it all day long if you want to pay 40 bucks a box for it. I just refused to pay $40 a box for something that less than three years ago was $10 a box. Definitely understand you there. Just like gasoline prices, supply and demand. That's why it was over $4 a gallon for gas price a couple of years back, because they held back the supply and we demanded it. Yeah, I just seen a photo from Orlando. Everybody's bitching and moaning about we're becoming a military state because all the military equipment going to the police. Uh, there's a photo floating around from an Orlando police officer wearing a surplus Kevlar helmet that was hit. Yeah, you gotta meet force with force. Civilians don't understand that. Liberals. Oh boy, we're gonna be in trouble now. We're gonna have the trolls hitting this. Ooh, this channel just made the trending list. Haha, -ha, that's awesome! Everybody download a scanner app off the Google Play Store. And why would you want to do that? And why would you want to do that, Ross? You can listen li right into the cops' radios. I take it you're listening to L.A. right now? It's just back on one of, one of those Radio Shack scanners. We got it up on our other phone. Yeah, I can imagine it's probably a three-ring circus. Just passed an old car broken down on the side of the road. Four other vehicles had stopped to help. That's what Power Tour is all about. Alright, Chucky, I'm up in this bitch. Don't go out to this motherfucker where nobody ain't talk. What the fuck these niggas ain't? Hey, what the fuck you niggas ain't came up? Well, y'all bouncing people, y'all some bouncing ass motherfuckers. Y'all some lame ass motherfuckers. Bye bye. That was troll number two, folks. Is everybody happy? Yeah, but listen, we're running with the Florida group. We just pulled into the Sunoco on the I-10 West, and uh, I just got a text that uh, 8.5 miles west of us is a traffic incident on the 10. Does it show up on WISE? That's right. Went WISE through Google. I like using WISE because it uh, shows you the travel speeds and the amount of uh, distance of the backups. Testing one, two, three. I hear you. Make sure. Say something. Hello there. Hey, is it still wet and rainy over there at the event today? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, we're still an hour away. We're getting there. Rick, were they going to call you when they were on their way? You hear me now, Rick? Yeah, loud and clear, thanks. Got my picture in my t-shirt. <laughs> nice. Hey, Cliff, are you still behind me? I can't see you guys. Oh, there you are. What was that? Never mind, I see you. I love a parade. Brian, you out there? Man, I'm not normally impatient, but being stuck the last two miles is frustrating trying to get into the venue. What do you mean, not impatient? Cliff, I'm going to have to tell the moderator to kick you off for being argumentative. <laughs> Quit the whining, fellas. Like I said, I love a parade. Candy cane. I know Mark's ready to get in. I just dropped a couple pictures on here for you. Uh, while you're waiting in line out there. Hey, that's really cool. Thanks. Posted a few on Facebook earlier as well. I'm, uh, while I'm sitting here watching the race, I'll try to throw a few more out there too so I don't clog up this uh, feed here with a bunch of pictures. I tell you, this tool has brought a different personality to the event. It's kind of neat being connected like this and hearing what's going on. So uh, thanks for participating and setting it up. Heck yeah, I feel like I'm there and I haven't even left the house yet. Yeah, I know I'm a bit of a chatty Cathy, so I've been having a ball here uh, using this app myself. Uh, and it's also been good to connect up with some of you guys out there uh, at the event. I've already run into a few of you and it's been really cool. I just dropped a pic on here of a feller that came prepared for the uh, Louisiana-Texas weather. Does anyone know where the registration is at Baytown? We were late yesterday. They told us to meet them there today, and we're trying to find it, and no one knows. Thank you. Looks like it's at Barber, 
Barbers Hill High School. Yes, it's at the high school uh, between I-10 and the event center. Uh, you'll take a ride into that, go get your uh, credentials, and then head to the racetrack. Do you guys know the name of that high school? Barbers Hill High School. I'm trying to post a picture from the Galleria for you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We'll get it tomorrow. We're already here. Hey, how do I see the gallery on this app? I had to click on somebody else's picture to actually post a picture from one of my galleries. That was the only way I could figure out how to do it. Hey, guys, coming a little late to that conversation. It is seriously wet in Baytown. So I guess I'll be another wet t-shirt contest at 5. Is the rain at least cooling you guys off? We already left the venue. My buddy had to get home to his loving, caring wife. Outside temperatures reading about 77, though. It is nice and cool. And just like yesterday, rain out. Well, anybody still there? Did they uh, get the uh, burnout contest uh, done in time? I wasn't over by there, but I can tell you the heavens opened up about 20 minutes ago. There's no way that they got through it. I don't know if they started. I never heard the motors or anything. Yeah, I believe everybody's still here. Yeah, I guess they're uh, not letting us out. That explains the lack of movement here. Everyone's just sitting in their cars waiting. Yeah, I think no people don't realize they can go right. they will take them right back to I-10, not having to go left to hit 99. Well, remember that happened last year in, in, in Gonzales. They wouldn't let anybody out, or, or the traffic backed up so bad nobody, nobody could get out. Yeah, they put us all in the very back, so we probably have to wait for the whole front end to clear out, but... Oh, got AC anyways. A lot of people don't. What a mess. Nobody's going nowhere. We're just sitting here waiting for everybody to move up just a little bit to let someone else out. Here's the stand -up. Are you guys in the staging line or in the uh, uh, exit line? We're in a parking lot. Everybody else is trying to pull out at the same time, so we're just sitting here waiting to get us a spot to pull out. Well, I'm sure I missed the conversation already, but does anyone know what's happening at the uh, Royal Purple Racetrack here? Still a line to get in, but weather's looking pretty nasty. It looks to me like they're closing down. They're closing up their tents and uh, loading up their trailers. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. It's starting to come in nasty now. Okay. Does anyone know why we're not moving at Baytown and why we're just stuck in traffic? I uh, haven't got a clue. I'm all the way in the back. I can see a cop in the intersection, so I'm not sure. We're stuck way in the back, too. We just, we were glad that we got on pavement before it really started raining. We're up toward the front. We're moving pretty good. We're just letting people in and people out, but we're moving slowly. So they pretty much call it for the day? We're done for the day. We're going to go check in the hotel. And then I'm going to try to talk him into the pier. Yeah, out, he, out here at the event, it is raining cats and dogs. And uh, you're not going to see anything. I'm sure everyone's wrapping up for the day. It's insane. When's everybody planning on leaving out tomorrow morning uh, for Austin? Early in the morning or after the morning commute? What's everybody's thoughts on that? Well, I'm leaving at 5 a.m., but going to San Antonio to see my mom first so it's the only reason why I'm leaving early but your best bet is you, if you can leave by probably 7 a.m. you'll beat most of traffic or wait till the, after 9 and you'll be everybody else should be at work. My co-pilot here that lives in uh, Houston and drives it every day all day long says need to leave there by 6 30 7's gonna be too late. I guess it depends how fast you drive. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. How long does it take to get from Houston to Austin? Three hours. I'm heading there now. So if we leave like at 9 or 10, we're getting there early afternoon. Even in 8, because you're going to account for traffic. Yeah, it'll be three to three and a half hours from uh, Baytown to, uh, to the raceway in uh, Austin. Anybody know if I can get my nails done when we get there at the venue? Girl, I'm with you. I need my nails done, too.
<laughs> Thank you. My husband just rolled his eyes. <laughs> I did my own this morning. If you're offering to do ours when we get there, we'll hook up. <laughs> Girl, I'll meet you somewhere. We can go do whatever and our guys can go see cars. The guys can go and do whatever. I've been living in fear that somebody was going to ask me a question about the car when he goes to the bathroom. I'm thinking, uh, it's got a steering wheel. At least I know the make and model and kind of knew that it was before the traditional makes. I was going to make up for my ignorance by getting my nails done the color of the car. At least you ladies are out here. I couldn't convince mine to come with me. Hey, I think it's awesome. I keep seeing the pink Mustang convertibles and my boyfriend says, no. Well, after my car was involved in an incident, I'm driving my wife's Corvette on power tour with Plan B, so uh, he's understanding. You should send your wife a picture of this rain and tell her what she's missing out on. I got my wife to drive 566 miles to get us here. I sat in the passenger seat. It was quite nice. I'm here, and so far I've drove all 1,077 miles. I love driving, too, but not the 69 Rebel. I like driving my Charger. Y'all driving that little red, white, and blue Rebel? No, we're in the uh, 1969 Rebel station wagon. It has a wood paneling look. The uh, profile picture on my account is the car. Is anyone else getting the flash flood warnings coming through on their phones? We got it on the Challenger. These Houstonians are pretty much used to this for the last couple of months. Us Texans in general, we've been getting a boatload of it in Austin, too. Us Arkansans have been getting um, probably close to about 20 inches in the month of May. Every day it rained. I think the uh, statistics in Austin was that uh, by March we had already uh, reached our annual rainfall count. Now we've probably tripled it by now. I'll take a little bit of water. We had all kinds of tornadoes here last month in uh, Kansas. We just uh, did a little overpass over a city street and it is completely flooded. Looks like a river going down that street. Sounds like last year in Champaign. Last year we had just missed the hail that passed through there too. Um, we went out to the, the drive-in theater event. Continue. Somebody cue Stevie Ray Vaughan that my GPS butted in. I said uh, somebody cue Stevie Ray Vaughan for this flood. Any locals know of any good restaurants around here? Hey, we're about to hit the road here. They're moving us pretty well out of the grounds now. Uh, well, not us. <laughs> We're still sitting in the back. We're sitting in the back, too. No movement with any cars whatsoever. Well, up here towards the front, they have both lanes going, and uh, cops, man, no. And that's why it's holding up over here. All the cops are standing underneath a uh, canvas cover staying dry. That's hilarious. One, two, three, four, five, six cops all standing under a canvas. I'm not even from here, and I would rather walk up there and direct traffic than sit back here and do nothing. You have a smartphone? We've got two lanes all merging into one, and everyone's being real courteous and humping on it, so they're moving a lot of cars out right now, but it's not being controlled. It's just people being pretty smart. Well, if you leave at a certain time tomorrow, this is what you'll be doing in Houston. Hey, Adana, I had a chance to take a peek at that picture. I do remember that car. Sweet. Thanks. Anyone else know why we're not moving out yet? I'm about, I don't know, 20 minutes away from uh, Baytown. Do you know if they're still letting people uh, stamp their, their long-haul card? They're supposed to do it until 6 p.m., and I have never seen them not do that. So I'm sure if you can make it in against all that traffic, there's still a time card out there to be stamped. Okay, thanks. And on the uh, on the literature there, they said this one was going to be open till seven. 
Yeah, fair enough. I would tell you that everybody and their brothers already left because of this big rain, but for sure the administrators are still there. You'll be fine. Not sure if my last one went out, but uh, yeah, for sure there'll still be somebody there now, at least until 6. If it has said 7, I believe that, but like I said, all the participants would have left because of this huge rain, but you'll be fine. My schedule says registration closes at 6, not 7, but I imagine they will definitely be there till 6. Park as close to the gate as you can when you get in there. Uh, traffic hadn't moved in quite a while. Still about a thousand cars here. We're still stuck in the back. Lots of cars moving, but not really going anywhere. Yep, the schedule I'm looking at with the direction says gates open 12 noon to 7 p.m. So I think I could probably get it. It says I'm supposed to get there by 6.10 according to Waze. If I were you, I would continue to go there. I'm sure at 6.10 they'll still be around. I wouldn't stress. Just keep on going. I concur. We got to Gonzales last night at 6.32 and registered and picked up our credentials, so I think you'll be okay. Has anyone figured out what the holdup is at the gate? Not to be a, a whiner, but we've been sitting here in the car for an hour. Well, it looks like I'm getting close to the front. And it's just uh, all the cars going to one lane. You can backtrack and make your way uh, by the grandstands, come back around to the front. You can probably get out that way. What was it that somebody was saying earlier about a whole bunch of fleet people that were supposed to be directing traffic that were standing under a tarp? Uh, it looks like the cops are out to direct it now. Yeah, sorry guys, this is Rick. I was driving. Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw five or six cops standing underneath a canvas that was hooked onto the back of their uh, patrol vehicle. So glad to hear they're out there directing it now. I think it had to do with the lightning, but really, is that canvas going to do anything for you? I don't think so. Well, hang in there, guys. I'm dropping off. I'm at the hotel. Got rained out, but it still beats a day at work. Bye for now. I'm from around Kansas City area, and the Kansas Speedway probably won't be any better. It's usually a nightmare over there when they let out a NASCAR race. So we'll see. Missed that first part. What'd you say? We're from around the Kansas City area, and the Kansas Speedway probably won't be any better. As darkness falls across the land, power to our participants look for dryness for their heads to land. How you doing out there tonight, everyone? I'm actually in need of a nut for a U-boat, actual U-boat, myself. A nut for a U-boat? Really? Exactly. That's what I said when I looked at it. Are you talking about like a U-bolt nut, as in the leaf spring U-bolt? Sadly, yes. Do you want me to get you past that? That would be great. Find you a local Ace Hardware, True Value, or something like that. And they have their nut and bolt assortments. And for a bolt, oh, off the top of my head, that's probably... 3 8 bolt, maybe a 7 16 um, from a coupler nut, which is basically a long, a long uh, standard nut, except it's for joining two bolts together or two pieces of threaded rod together. Run that up there with a flat washer on it, call it a day. Okay, thanks. If you can't do that, just double, double up your nuts. You just find some standard nuts that fit it and double them up. That also help to act to lock it. Gotcha. I'll try to find a place around here with that. What happened? Did you rear end shift? I remember you call you you were looking for a tow truck. You were looking for something because I sent you the the tow truck uh, information. But what happened to it? Well, the rear end was grinding real bad, but I didn't notice the nut at that time. I don't think it was that because I wasn't hearing the noise. I was hearing about three-fourths of the way down here. So I just changed the dope in the rear end and, and just let it let it do what it do. But it did shift a little, so that may have had to had some uh, adding to the issue. Yeah. 
yeah, you might get lucky and that'll work, you know, that, I don't know who did your rear end work or not, but, uh, you know, that might be a fine thread nut on there. Like I said, if anything, I just run a regular nut on there, double it up and call it a day if you can't find something that's that'll work. But you may have broke a center bolt. Now, I did look, and the center bolt was there, so that's the first thing I checked when I looked up under there because it's just the, uh, the the actual nut is missing, and it had a little shift. It's the axle itself hasn't shifted, but the bracket is kind of, you know, where it's missing a nut, so... Yeah, that's an easy fix. As long as your rear end ain't shifted, yeah, that's an easy fix. So do you know if there's anything on the NASA side? Because that's where we are now, and I didn't really see anything where it was raining, so I didn't really see anything on the way down. Is there anything on the what side? We're down at the Hilton on NASA Boulevard or something like that. I think we're Clear, Clear Lake. Oh, I have no clue about that, partner. Okay, thanks. Eh, good luck to you. Give a shout-out if you got a problem. No problem. Hope to see you in Austin. That's a nice looking ride, friend. 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 Nice looking ride.